Hey guys, Sydney Master 51 here, or 1911 Man, here to do another review. <clears throat> Not really a review, actually, I take that back. Uh, it, this is more of a comparison video of two great Beretta pistols um, have really proven themselves. This one I've only read kind of in magazines, um, so you don't really actually hear about it. This one, I mean, you see it in movies everywhere, literally everywhere, so I mean, you know. Um, but I'm going to tell you what I like and what I don't like about each or both of these pistols. And then you guys should expect another video coming out uh, about this one against a Glock Gen 4, um, which I should be getting in the mail this week? This week? Yeah. But I thought since this one's kind of tricked out, it's kind of got the extended bumper, got a threaded barrel, I think I should make this. Look a little bit more stock as opposed to being all tricked out, not fair. So, put this to the side. I want to say something right off the bat. Uh, this has a really strong recoil spring. I mean, it's really strong. I mean, so, you know. This one, this is probably just this uh, individual gun, but this is kind of pathetic. Like, if you listen to it, Just kind of sounds pathetic. It doesn't sound like this. Really strong. And this, we're gonna, not going to obviously be doing real steel evaluations just because obviously I don't have either one of these handguns. So, ah, geez. Uh, so you know, this is a detonator threaded barrel. Unfortunately, I don't have any uh, unboxings of these as uh, when I unbox these. I don't think I had my camera handy, either that or I was way too lazy to do it. Um, but I actually got a different PX4. <clears throat> I got a whole new one, and then replaced the internals and put them back in here, because actually what ended up happening was I uh, actually had a broken trigger spring, and my magazine catch spring, everything broke inside of there, so I just got a new one, just because I loved it so much. Believe it or not, I might end up actually... Um, buying a Marui PX4 just because of its internals are like bulletproof so you know I'm just putting the stock internals back uh, a while ago I made a video about how I modified the barrel um, on my PX4 that was because I accidentally screwed up by sanding it so you know every time I listen to that it just sounds so great okay I'm gonna take this nine ball bumper off had to modify it, unfortunately, notch it out because it was actually getting caught on the frame. That was probably by design, but I generally like when my magazines free fall just because I'm a snob and I don't know why. So you can kind of see it retracts the barrel a lot. And actually, <laughs> I love that sound. So we got that. Put that here as my hands are moving really fast. All right. Um, this is kind of off the uh, on the cuff or however you say. Uh, this is just being recorded right on YouTube, just because kind of like my other video from being back, other than my other videos that I've uploaded. All right. So two stock, well, nearly stock guns. Um, let's start off the bat. Right off the bat. I don't like the M9 all that much. Why do I not like an M9 and why do I own an M9? I own this M9 because I've always kind of wanted one of the um, older generation M9s. Uh, I, I had one that was my first uploaded video when I was trying to start a business. Um, I had one, you know, I, I really have no idea why I had one. Uh, I thought it was cool, but it felt like a tube. I was holding like PVC pipe. And you know what? That stands. Because that is ridiculous. It, it literally looks like I'm holding a tube. And that is another thing I will give the uh, uh, the PX4. This is so much better than this. This is just so much skinnier and just feels so much better. Um, this is really heavy. Obviously, I mean, duh, it's going to be heavier. It's full metal. It's probably a little bit more durable. Um... <clears throat> Excuse me, just came out from having bronchitis. Um, another thing I really kind of don't like about the uh, Beretta is the ported barrel or ported slide design. I understand uh, why Beretta did that. It was because 
when it was going through testing in the military, they liked it so you could shake crap out, but it also leaves a big area for crap going in. I uh, actually made a video a while back. I don't think I uploaded it on this channel. I need to. If I'm going to, I will. But I actually put this thing through the ringer. I, I got a tub of mud out. I dropped this thing in there. I got it all the working parts, all the, the um, breech block, everything. And you'd think with the intricate workings of a breech, road hating breech block, that this thing would uh, foul up and not cease to function. It did not. It, if anything, it just got a little bit sluggish with the trigger response. That's about it. Uh, but it fired and fired and fired and fired. I even put dirt inside the magazine. I packed it in there and then I did this a little bit. Filled it up with BBs. Cracked it and fired. It worked perfectly. Uh, I don't think I could say the same thing about this thing. I might end up making a video, but I think I'm going to end up selling this just because it's not that great. It's kind of finicky. Um, it doesn't like to keep the hammer back. I have no idea why. Uh, it'll fire and then sometimes not even keep the hammer back. So, you know. Um, I also do not like the size of the handgunner. Um, I'm kind of more of a compact kind of style guy. I don't like full-size handguns. You might notice I don't actually own any full-size 1911s or ni any 1911s anymore. Um, I don't think I've actually ever reviewed a 1911 on this channel, and I don't know why. That I, I call myself a 1911 man, but whatever. Uh, if you notice, the Beretta PX4 is substantially smaller. It's like four inches. This is like four some odd inches. This is actually dubbed the uh, full size PX4, but I mean, as you can see, if I were to have a Glock 19 here, which, oh, by the way, I guess who ordered Gen 4 Glock 19? Pre ordered, I guess. Gen 4 Glock 19 off of Airsoft Global. Huh? remember. Airsoft Global. I'm going to have another comparison with this in the Glock 17 Gen 4 and then another one with the Glock 19 Gen 4. Uh, so, booyah. That's going to be really cool. I'm really excited. Another thing I don't like about this M9 is that my camera doesn't want to stay up for some reason. I'm not sure why. That's strange. Oh, well. Now, this is kind of just a knock to this specific M9 um, CD much, um, and not to this specific M9, um, being though as it doesn't actually have a decock. Um, M9s are supposed to really keep falling. Okay. Really? Ugh. Eh, I guess I can do that. Um, it, they're supposed to have decocks. Oh, wrong hand. This obviously does not. I know, uh, and this is modeled, this is a KJW M9. It is modeled after the Marui M9. I know decock. The Marui M9 has a decocker. This does not. I don't like that. This is like one of the cheaper knockoffs of the eight, er, of the PX4. This is modeled right after the P uh, Marui PX4. Decocker. And it works. So, I mean... You'd think they could at least put that in there. <clears throat> I like KJW as a company, although their pistols have been kind of finicky for me. Their blocks, their trigger groups kind of crapped out on me after about 5,000 rounds, and I kept round count. This thing, this frame, has been through about 30,000 plus rounds, just because I, when I bought it, I bought it with the attention, attention of putting it through the ringer, which is probably why the trigger spring broke. Um, <clears throat> which is also probably why a few other things kind of crapped out. The, uh, I mean, it literally has been through 30,000 rounds, and I love this handgun. That's why I bought another one to keep it alive. Um, this one probably won't see that round count just because I like it too much, and I don't want it to break. So, you know. But this one, um, obviously, uh, when I bought it, it's been used. You can kind of see some barrel crowning or uh, b barrel crowning there. I mean, it's uh, where the slide is rubbed up against it. This frame is stock. The trigger group and everything else is WE, which is probably why it's not that great. But still, I mean, it's WE period. It's a WE slash KJW. So you know. Um, but the function of the handgun is fine. I mean, it doesn't really not work, but 
Uh, I've seen KJW M9s do the same thing with the uh, hammer thing. Don't want to stay back and whatnot. Okay. Some other things that I do not like about the M9. I'm beating up on the M9 first. I'll beat up on this, this guy last. Because I feel like it. you can't say anything about it. So, ha! It's my video. Shh. Another thing. I do not like the trigger pull on the KJW M9. When I do double action, there's literally no wall. It just keeps going. This, you can prep a shot. It stops right there. Nope, nope, that didn't. It stops. Like, that's your wall. And then you can pull the trigger, and you can prep the trigger, you can aim and whatnot. I can see that some people would like to be surprised, but there's absolutely... You can't... There's no prep. You can't prep the trigger at all, because it just keeps going. Obviously... Some people might like that. I do not. It sucks, because I'm just kind of like, yeah, all right. Hey, oh, damn it. <laughs> I shoot somebody out of what to. Oh, crap. Can't prep the trigger, and then bring it up, and then bang, because then you don't know when you're... You have a lot of take up, and then it goes. So, you know, uh, this one, there's a wall, like I said. So, I mean, I, I like... i got to look down here on all my video screen. I like this one better. It's a lot better. Another thing I don't like about this is I don't like how I see mechanics outside outside here. What if crap were to get in there and then it would kind of clog that up? I like not seeing anything. That's, that's kind of nice. I know there's a trigger, there's a slide mounted safety and whatnot. People don't really like that just because you can't really cock or do anything. Just grab back here. That's what I do. Another thing I don't like about this, this stupid safety always falls off. Holy crap! Every time I have an M9, this retarded safety falls off. It sucks. Excuse my language. It, it sucks. The stupid Allen key, they couldn't, like, make that part an integral part or something. Not an integral, but just a part. That's any M9 you ever buy on the airsoft market. I've never had a KSC or a KWA. But I've seen videos online. People have the same freaking problems. Stupid lug. Why? Why would you make it a lug that backs out, it like walks out every time you shoot the freaking handgun? Holy crap! And then why is the Allen key so small if it freaking falls out all the time? Sorry, more problems. Another thing I don't like about the M9, I don't like the break breakdown of this. It's you gotta push this, you gotta push a button here and take it down there. It's it's simple, it's simplistic. It's probably because I've become a Glock fanboy where you just uh, take down bar and you push it forward. And you just do that. Oops, slide falls off. It's probably because I'm starting to become a Glock fanboy. But, oh well. So, I mean, just another thing I don't really necessarily care for. Ugh. My camera just keeps moving. It just doesn't want to not stay. <coughs> Excuse me. Some other things... Uh, now, some things that I do like about the M9. It looks awesome. It is a very handsome handgun. I mean, it just looks like... It looks pretty. I like it. It's a nice handgun. It's not... It's not ugly. Oh, and I don't like the single action trigger pull either. There's no prep anywhere. It feels kind of mushy. It's just like... Eh. This... I'm not going to waste any gas because green gas is expensive. So, that has a nice defined wall. So, this is right there. Wall. Bang. It's nice. I like that. Some other things I don't like about the M9. No rail. I know you could say buy a Beretta M9 railed, but I'm comparing this to this. So, deal with it. I have an M9 frame. I have an M9A1 frame downstairs. Didn't like that one either. It was WE, so it was really crappy feeling. But it just adds a lot of weight to the handgun. I just don't like it. It's unnecessary weight. Um, now, some things I, I do kind of like about this handgun uh, the, over the PX4. <coughs> Excuse me, once again. Is um, <clears throat> I really like the trigger guard. It's got a really nice really large trigger guard on the M9. It's, uh, it's got a, some checkering up front, so if you want to do, uh, like, put your finger up front like that to manage recoil, you can. 
Um, generally, I don't do that, but on, on the PX4, you kind of slip because there's nothing really up front. I know you could probably stipple up there, um, like I have done elsewhere. Um, but, I mean, it's really nice to see that they've done that. Obviously, I think in the Army or wherever they bought this for. They, I, I suppose people could... Excuse me. Uh, they, they made it so they did that on purpose because people did shoot like that. Um, some other things I do like about this handgun is I, I like the back strap on here. Uh, as opposed to some other handguns of the time, much like the... Da, 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 da. I like the back strap. Just, I mean, the grip, other, the grip angle feels good. Not the grip itself, but the grip angle feels nice. Um, it's, it's really, it's really nice and pointable. Other than the fact that I feel like I'm gripping a two by four. <laughs> you know, well, other than that. <clears throat> um, some other issues I also have with this M9. This is probably going to be the extent of my issues with this handgun. Um, is the uh, trigger bar spring back in here likes to pop out on mine, so occasionally I have to unscrew the hand guard, <laughs> hand guard grips, grips whatever. Uh, I occasionally have to unscrew these, which is why they're all beat to hell. <laughs> so I unscrew those, got to put that back in there. It's it's probably just I need to buy another one, and I just need to get up my lazy ass, go online and buy one. But um, you know, I'm probably not going to just because I have no desire to, because I'm going to get rid of the handgun anyway. Um, one thing, another thing that this has over this, you can buy extended mags for this. No such luck here. Uh, that's probably just because this is kind of newer to the market. Not really newer all that much, actually, take it back. But, I mean, this has obviously been on the market a lot longer than this has. So, you know. Alright, we're done beating up on ye olde M9 here. Um, pretty much it. I mean, it's got some great sights. You can get uh, get this on a flat surface racket. It. It's really nice, uh, which is something I can't say about the PX4. This has got a nice retarded ramp right there, so you're, you're shit out of luck. I'm gonna try and get else. There, you, great. Racket on a flat angle, really great. I like that. It's good stuff. All right. Thank you for being my dummy to beat up on. It's very nice of you. Um, <clears throat> Alright, my PX4. Why do I like my PX4? I love my PX4, first of all, just because of the pointability. I pick up this handgun, and you can see it's straight. As soon as I pick it up, it's straight on my forearm. And, I mean, it just goes right back for shootability. It's, it's off the charts. I love it. I love this better than any handgun I've ever held before it. I mean, it's better than a 1911, it's better than an M9. Better than a, uh, I was about to say PX4, but that's what that is, so. Better than a Glock, but I, I kind of like Glocks. I'm kind of leaning back towards, excuse me, Glocks. Better than SIGs. Good Lord, do I hate SIGs, how they feel. Ugh. Um, and, actually, I feel cars. Those are pretty nice. Those are pretty nice handguns. Um, so, I mean, generally, this just feels so much greater. It is really skinny for a double stack handgun. I'm kind of surprised about that. Um, I was I was really sold. And you know what? It's great to have a polymer lower receiver here, just because you can st um, customize it as much as you want. I've stippled mine, and obviously it's been painted, uh, kind of like a dark earth, I suppose, tan slash dark earth. I, mean, I have no idea what to say for that. Uh, it's got a rail integr integr. Uh, it's part of it. <laughs> the rail is part of the frame. <laughs> I guess is what I'm getting at here. Why did you do that? Um, it's great. I love that. It doesn't add, like, maybe 0.1 grams of weight. I mean, it's not metal, so it's not going to add a lot of weight. Uh, unfortunately, there is only one notch, so you're kind of screwed if you want to add anything smaller than that. But I think this is designed for full-size lights, so I, I, generally you're going to be fine. Some issues I did end up encountering with this handgun was what I mentioned earlier is uh, after about 30,000 rounds, your uh, trigger spring is going to break. So watch out for that. Next 30,000 rounds comes around. Um, okay. I think I got a second generation of PX4 because my, my earlier one didn't come with a blue barrel. So that's strange. Um, came out with actually different recoil spring. I wish I brought that up. But it actually is completely different. It's not the same recoil spring. It's a different gauge. It's This is... Uh, actually, I switched back to the older one because the new one has too much 
um, it's too t yeah, it's too tough, which I'm thinking is going to affect my um, my gas efficiency with um, my magazine. So I took that out, replaced it with the old one, which is still really stiff. Um, some things you need to watch out for, which I have not encountered, oddly enough. I think I've gone through about maybe 600 rounds on this thing. There's a little plate back here. Focus, focus. There's a plate right there. Um, well, I am being retarded today. I don't know why. This plate. It's it's right in front of the blowback housing. It's a little bar right there. That usually chips out at about a thousand rounds. Obviously, I've not hit a thousand rounds because that hasn't broken yet. Uh, my other slide has a nice big chip out where that is. So, I'm watching that because that can get lodged in your blowback housing. I'm thinking about pre-breaking it, but I mean, if it doesn't break by itself on here or um, or do anything else, um, but I am every few magazines I take it out, I inspect it, just check out or watch that. But you can see it obviously comes in contact with the outer barrel, and uh, that's evident by the wear uh, on the back. So, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Bronchitis sucks. I also love the ease in which you can assemble this handgun. I mean, it's really simple. Uh, I also love just the feel. And it is just absolutely sexy. That is a sexy handgun. Look, look at that. I mean, that, oh, it's pretty. I love it. I also love the compact size of it. I love the G-Cop feature. Um, on airsoft guns, that's kind of hard to come by with me. I mean, if you're not counting the SIGs, but... Once again, don't like sakes, so, you know. The only really thing I could fault it on <laughs> would be his, at about 30,000 rounds, you should expect the trigger bar to break, <laughs> trigger spring to break, but, you know, whatever. Um, something funny I encountered on this one is it has both red dots. If you uh, saw my original PX4 review, <laughs> the first one I came with, or the, that I got didn't actually have both red dots, so, for the safety. Uh, it's kind of funny I got that. Um, so, I mean, oh, and some things that I really like is that you can replace the back straps. I've actually grown to like the medium back strap, gives me something a little bit more to hang on to, as opposed to the small, which I almost feel like I'm over-gripping the gun. My fingers go, like, all the way around the frame. I don't know. And it puts it, like, right on my distal joint, so I feel like I'm shooting the gun correctly. So I'm not doing this number, looking like a gangster or whatever. Um, like I said, the only things that I could really knock it on would be the frame or the slide or the <laughs> slide mounted safety. That is a bit of a hindrance whenever I'm trying to like cock the gun, but I mean really that's only training. You just kinda I gotta think, oh just grab back here or kinda do this number which kinda claw it, rack the slide and engage or do whatever you're doing. So I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, you saw some upgrades. You can do the handgun. I mean, you can put a threaded outer barrel on it. I really like this so far. Uh, lube it up. Makes it sound great. Uh, the bumper is great when you want to get a good positive um, magazine change. Um, I can't see you doing actual, like, speed reloads with this thing. Um, throwing magazines on the ground. But it's great when you just want to get a great positive clip on your handgun. It's I like that. It's nice. Um, kind of makes it look kind of different. I really like that. Um, so, I'm just going to kind of give you a view of what it looks like with all the crap on it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but that's pretty much the extent of this video. You should watch out for a Glock Gen 4 review, um, or Glock Gen 4 tan, and it'll probably be a joint review of the Gen 4 tan and the Gen 4 19. That's not really descriptive, but whatever. I like the thread um, thread cap. It's nice. So. Kind of looks it gives it kind of a different look. I like that kind of combat look. So, <clears throat> that is pretty much it. I had some accuracy tests. This kind of creamed the M9 just because that's like sporadic. It'll go fully automatic and then vent all the gas and crap. So, all right, this is actually just loan to the left.
Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, stay tuned for other videos, and yeah, bye.